It's lovely to be in your company once again as we share another thought for the day. At the weekend we were celebrating Mitra ceremonies. Uh, four women in the west of Ireland became Mitras and what that means is is that they became friends of the Triratna community and the order and they were making three declarations. They were declaring that they are Buddhist and that they are now living a Buddhist lifestyle, that they're doing that through living by the ethical guidelines or what we call the five precepts or training principles. And that they were doing that in the context of a spiritual community or Sangha, and in this case, the Triratna community. And as any of you who have been to a Mitra ceremony know, it's a beautiful ceremony. Um, I think we all come away feeling lighter, brighter and happier. Uh, particularly, I think one of my favourite parts is that rejoicing that we do, uh, we, where somebody rejoices in each individual who's becoming a Mitra. And of course, rejoicing is something that we do on many different occasions uh, within the world of Buddhism. But what it has also done for me this weekend, apart from lifting me and making me feel very happy, is it has caused me just to reflect once again on friendship and what it is to be a spiritual friend. And the Buddha has something to say about this, um, which I always find great because then, you know, we have we have guidance from the Buddha. If you notice here behind me, I have a, a, a print. It's not very clear, I know, but um, it's a picture of the Buddha and Ananda and they're walking along a path in India somewhere, but they're in conversation and their body language, you know, they're facing one another. or They've turned toward one another. Uh, they're looking at each other. They're making eye contact and there's even the t gentle touch of one for our arm on the or one hand on the other's arm. And it, for, for me, it sums up what the spiritual life is, what spiritual friendship is. So what is spiritual friendship? Well, when we're on the path in Buddhism, we're on the path towards enlightenment, ultimately. And what this means um, is that we're moving towards limitless compassion and wisdom. And on that path, uh, it would be a very lonely path to do on our own. So it, it becomes easier if we do it in the company of uh, good friends or admirable friends, as, as sometimes some of the translations will say. And as I said, the Buddha has something to say about friendship. There's a story that Ananda one day came to the Buddha and he said to him, um, the spiritual friendship, the, the fellowship of good companions is half of the spiritual life. And the Buddha said, no, no, it's not. Spiritual friendship, friendship is the whole of the spiritual life. So what does that mean? Well, when we have good friends, when we have um, admirable friends, what did they do? What we do for each other is, is that we, we share um, our experiences. We can help one another to follow the precepts. Um, you know, when somebody becomes a Mitra, they, they declare that they're going to try to live a more ethical life. And, and they do so by following five precepts. And when we become order members, we follow 10 precepts. So one of the things that spiritual friends can do is, is that we support each other uh, in, in following these. And we gently and with, with love and kindness, we um, remind one another when we might be slipping slightly off that path. But we can also support um, one another in other ways. And that's where that rejoicing uh, comes in, where we can rejoice in the merits of one another, the, the, the beautiful qualities that we have. And if you've ever had someone uh, rejoice in something or tell you something that you're good at, it always feels good. So there are some of the benefits of spiritual friendship. And with that thought, I'd just like to leave you for this week. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.